Hello, my name's Andrew. Almost every gospel account includes that Jesus will be the judge of the world. Put simply, this video is about that topic and we'll explore it just for a few minutes. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please subscribe below so that we can keep you updated. But in talking about Jesus as judge of the world, we need to start by thinking about God, his father in heaven. Let's just start by saying, well, why did God create the earth? And a very simple answer, God created the earth to be inhabited by human beings. It was part of his purpose, which he tells us about in the Bible. For example, here in Isaiah chapter 45, thus says the Lord who created the heavens, he who formed the earth and made it, he established it, he didn't create it empty, he formed it to be inhabited by people like you and me. And he had a purpose in that because he wanted people like us, the people he'd made, to serve him. In the book of Revelation, the 24 elders in that vision say, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power. You have created all things and for your pleasure they are and were created. So the idea is that creating human beings and having them respond to him gives God pleasure when, uh, when they obey him and try to follow his ways. But the world, as described in the Bible, uh, is rather different. It's essentially evil. It's astray from God. And what the world does is often uh, something that God isn't happy with, uh, that is wrong in his view. Jesus said this to his disciples, well, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify about it, that its works are evil. So Jesus saw around him that the works of the world and people in it were essentially against God's wishes. And so there has to be a resolution, doesn't there? God created the earth to be inhabited. He wanted people to serve him and worship him and enjoy their time on the earth. And as against that, Jesus tells us that the world is essentially evil. And there has to be a resolution then between God as a righteous creator who wants people to serve him and a world whose works are evil. And that's where judgment comes in. What do we mean by judgment? Well, uh, just what we've been saying, an adjudication between what is right and just and good and lovely and what is not, what is against God. And that, if you like, is a definition of divine judgment. The angels who came to see the patriarch Abraham in Genesis 18 um, uh, spoke to Abraham about God's judgments. And Abraham said, shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just, what is right, what is fair? And that is the basis of God's judgment. So if God is the judge, who will be judged? Who will be judged? And there's a twofold answer to this uh, from the Bible. The first one is that God will judge nations. God created in, uh, humans as individuals, but of course, in due course, they split up into families and nations across the continent. Um, and it's interesting uh, the way God intends to judge nations, um, and that is to some extent dependent, he tells us, on how uh, those nations have treated God's people. The Old Testament uh, prophecy of Joel tells us that the nations around God's nation of Israel will be judged because of their mistreatment, and the Lord Jesus Christ talks about judging nations 
in his well-known parable of the sheep and the goats. Here's a verse from Isaiah chapter 26. Behold, the Lord is coming out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no more cover its slain. So this speaks of a time of judgment by God. It's in the context of God's dealings with nations in the time of Isaiah, actually. So we can see God is interested in how nations behave. <coughs> but God's also, of course, interested in the behaviour of individuals. That's how he set out in the first place to create individuals who would serve him and worship him. And so the Apostle Paul tells the believers in Corinth, we must all appear before Christ's judgment seat uh, to receive uh, the rewards of what we have done. Um, I would say at this point that I don't think the Apostle Paul here is saying that uh, all individuals who have ever lived will be judged uh, by Christ. He's talking here to people who have responded to the call of the gospel and whether they uh, continue or not in uh, Christ's footsteps will be part of what determines their future. So we've talked about um, God as judge, we've talked about who will be judged, but now we need to move on to the core of our uh, talk now, which is about Jesus as judge. So I've anticipated the answer to this question, who will carry out the judgment? In the past, in the Bible, God used agents to carry out his judgments. For example, book of Isaiah, uh, it says, O Assyrian, the rod of my anger. God sent the Assyrian nation against uh, his people, Israel, because of their wickedness. Uh, or God intervened directly in human affairs, for example, by sending the plagues against Pharaoh in Egypt in the book of Exodus. But in future, God has decided that his judgment will be carried out by his own son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us this himself in uh, John chapter 5. It's an interesting chapter to read as a whole, actually, about Jesus' work in, uh, in bringing about righteousness in the future, and his own future work for his kingdom. But he says God has given all judgment to him. So it's now Jesus, the judge, that we are looking at. Um, and so God will act through the Lord Jesus Christ in the future. Do you remember what the angel Gabriel said to Mary, the mother of Jesus, before Jesus was born? Said <clears throat> he will be great and be called the son of the most high. God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. So a sort of very wide-ranging um, promise about the future work of Jesus as world ruler on God's behalf. And incidentally, there are other videos in this series dealing with these, uh, these issues, so, so do subscribe and do find out about them. Um, and it's worth saying also, um, that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and his father are separate beings, although uh, they are one in purpose. So when Jesus brings judgments, they are in fact God's judgments, uh, they are separate. And, uh, and, and we explain that in this uh, season of talks as well. So back to uh, Jesus as the judge. Uh, the amazing thing is, of course, that the Lord Jesus Christ has exactly the right qualities to be the judge of the world. This is what Isaiah prophesied in chapter 11. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, that's Jesus. He will not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but he will judge with righteousness and decide with equity. And that's important. You see, Jesus can look on the heart of human beings. He can see inside the uh, intentions of nations and countries of the world. So Jesus can 
give true judgment, not just based on faulty hearsay evidence, but on actual perception of what is right and what is wrong. And that's, that's a marvellous thing to look forward to. Uh, so Jesus has the right qualities. So when will it take place? I said it's something to look forward to. What is the timing of this judgment? And um, that's important because the Bible says the judgment takes place at a future time set by God. Even Jesus himself doesn't know the precise time, but it is set for a fixed time. Uh, the Apostle Paul said that in his speech in Athens. God has fixed a day when he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. We know who that person is, of course. He's the one who God raised from the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ. So God knows when he will intervene to judge the world, but that is a time yet future. It was future when the Apostle Paul said it, it's still future today. But I think there is good reason to think that that time will be very soon. Incidentally, I hope this is making sense to you. Uh, and uh, if it's not, or if you have questions or comments, please just put them in the in chat below. So then, um, when will it be? In those days and at that time, says the prophet Joel, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations. Let the nations stir themselves up and come to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge the surrounding nations. So here is the judgment of God. We've already seen that it's going to be carried out by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see two things going on. One, that there is to be a restoration of the fortunes of what he called Judah and Jerusalem, a nation of Israel based in what we now call the land of Israel, Jude, uh, Jerusalem, as it's, I, I admit, disputed capital, but there it is in the Middle East, and it's a crucible uh, for world affairs even now. And secondly, we're told that the nations will stir themselves and come up to, <coughs> to Jerusalem, to the Valley of Jehoshaphat in the Middle East, and then there, there will be a judgment. So why do I think it will be soon? Well, because in the last 50, 60, 70 years, we have seen the restoration of the nation of Israel um, after the terrible Holocaust in the Second World War. And we have seen a nation grow, not without controversy, a lot of trouble in the Middle East, a uh, lot of uh, rivalry and dispute. But nevertheless, the fortunes of that nation are reversing. Uh, as God promised that they will. And so uh, I think the judgment that's talked of here can't be that far away. Indeed, the Bible says that it will happen when Jesus Christ returns to the earth. The Lord Jesus Christ will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So if you put those two Bible passages together, one from Joel and now this one from Paul's letter to Timothy, we see that the time is coming soon, I believe, at least, um, when Jesus will return, when he will judge the nations, when he will judge the living and the dead, and he will introduce his kingdom, the kingdom of God on earth. It's quite something to look forward to. So what will be the results of the judgment by the Lord Jesus Christ? Um, well, remember I set out earlier that there needed to be a resolution of the tension between a righteous, good and fair God and a sinful world, which for the most part doesn't serve him. So this is what prophet Isaiah says. At night, my soul longs for you. Indeed, my spirit within me seeks you diligently for when the earth experiences your judgments, the inhabitants of the world 
will learn righteousness. Isn't that a, an interesting prospect? So that um, at that time, when Jesus comes back and sits in judgment, people around the world will learn about God. They will learn righteousness. They will learn the kind of behaviour that God all along has wanted uh, people to show. And that needs leadership. Of course, Lord Jesus Christ will be back in the earth and he will show leadership. Uh, indeed. Uh, what we need is righteous and fair rulership and, compared with modern politics, effective rulership. So, first of all, we're told a king will reign righteousness. I won't surprise you to know that I think this is a prediction of the Lord Jesus Christ returning to reign on earth. The work of righteousness will be peace. The service of righteousness or the effect of righteousness, quietness and confidence forever. So we're promised peace on earth. Jesus Christ, we know, will bring peace on earth. And this, we understand, is how he will do it. Through, first of all, bringing God's judgments, but then teaching the inhabitants of the earth righteousness and ruling wisely and fairly. But also life for individuals. When Jesus comes back, he will raise dead people. Many of those, not everyone who's ever lived, but many who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake, these to everlasting life, but the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Elsewhere in the Bible, this is called the judgment seat of Christ. Christ will judge individuals who have heard the gospel and had the opportunity to respond to the call of the gospel. He will judge them about whether they have sought to follow him and to put into practice his teachings. And for those who uh, have responded to him, then everlasting life in his kingdom to help him in the teaching of the population of the world and its rulership. So what kind of people will be given life? Well, I've already said, haven't I? The righteous. People who have their sins forgiven through the saving work of the Lord Jesus Christ and seek to follow his steps, they will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Jesus adds, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So these are the kinds of people God wants to worship and uh, serve him. And of course, when Jesus comes back and raises the dead and gives them eternal life, sin will be removed for them. Conflict for them will be ended. Suffering for them will be gone. So eternal life won't be gradually getting older and iller, but will be being renewed day by day. So let's just wrap this up then. Hope you found it interesting. Please do, do comment uh, below if you've got anything to say or to ask. First then, God created the earth to be inhabited by people who serve him, but unfortunately, the world that he created, because of sin, the world is essentially evil and doesn't fully respond to him. So there has to be a resolution between those to fulfil God's original intentions and its divine judgment that is the way that those tensions will be resolved. And so, as we've seen, we can conclude that the Lord Jesus Christ will be the judge of the world. He will interview, uh, intervene soon on God's behalf, first of all, to judge nations for their treatment of God's people. Secondly, to raise individual human beings from the dead and decide on their future. And finally, to establish God's earthwide kingdom of righteousness and peace. 
So although the idea of Jesus as a judge of the world sounds scary to begin with, in fact, the outcome promised in the Bible is an encouraging one and a good one. So I suppose I should say then that every human being who hears the gospel, people like you and me, we need ourselves to think about that and make that choice. It's a choice basically between God and the world. It makes you think, doesn't it? Well, thanks for listening. As I said, please post any comments below. Uh, there are other gospel online videos that you can look at uh, and uh, please subscribe to the channel so you can find out what they are. And once again, thank you for listening.